Hey everyone, thanks for stopping by today. Check out one of our latest Internet in a Box builds. You may notice something unusual. A Llama AI on Internet in a Box. If you aren't familiar with Olama, it's basically a pre-packaged application that lets you run large language models on your local computer, so your information stays with you. If you ever thought about adding AI to your off-grid or locally hosted project, well, stick around. We're about to walk through the process to install Olama and Open Web UI on a Raspberry Pi 4, downloading models, uploading documents to use RAG or Retrieval Augmented Generation, and even creating a custom model for specific purposes. On top of that, we will show you how to edit an IIAB menu item to create a custom menu entry for your new locally hosted AI application and give it that factory fresh look. First things first, for this build I used a Raspberry Pi 4 with 4 gigabytes of RAM, a USB 1 terabyte hard drive, and I have it connected to the internet via a wired connection. I installed Raspberry Pi OS 64-bit Lite and did a full install of Internet in a Box, except for the Internet Archive module. This is important because I'm going to use the Internet Archive menu item to create my Olama menu icon. As the Internet Archive menu entry has a port mapped to it, and that's what I need in this case. Now to begin, I used PuTTY to connect to my Pi and authenticated my user account. I'm going to start with making sure curl is installed. And it is. Next, we use this command to install Olama. Hit enter, and it's going to reach out and start the installation process. Depending on your internet speed, it may install faster or slower but expect it to take a few minutes at least. Once it finishes, you should get this screen. You will get a warning saying no GPU was detected, but we expected this because we are using a Pi. But the process to run this on a full-size PC is very similar, so if you end up wanting to scale things up, this experience will come in handy. With a llama installed, we are going to now install Docker and this command will do it. We are using Docker because it makes setting up Open Web UI pretty easy. If you don't know about Docker, it's worth checking out. For today, simply follow along and you should absolutely be able to get it working. Once Docker finishes installing, we are going to use this command to add our user profile to the Docker user group. This just allows us to interact with Docker easier. Because we made changes to our user profile, we need to log out and log back in to make sure the changes take effect. Logging out will close our PuTTY window, so we need to reestablish the connection to log back in. Back in Terminal, we can use the Groups command to list all the groups our user account is a part of. And we can see Docker right there. Purely optional, but we can run this command to test Docker and make sure our install is working properly. And it is. Because Docker can't find a local image that matches our command, it reaches out and pulls it down to our local machine. That's the beauty of Docker, and you can customize additional aspects, like we are just about to do. But first, we need to edit a file to allow Open Web UI to communicate with Olama. In Terminal, enter this command to edit the Olama service file. The file will open in a text editor and add exactly what we add where we add it. Once you've finished editing the file, press Ctrl O to save, Y to actually save, then Ctrl X to exit. Okay, back in Terminal, mirror these commands to restart these services. Now, we need to create a directory to place the Open Web UI Compose file. This command will create that directory. 
Now we will change to the directory we just created, like so. Enter the following command to open up a new compose file that we will use for Open Web UI. This creates a new file, and it's empty, obviously. So now enter this text exactly as shown. This is important because this will specify a specific image for Open Web UI that works with the Raspberry Pi 4. It also specifies port 4244 to use for the graphic interface. This is important to use if you want to convert the Internet Archive menu item to a llama in Internet in a Box. Otherwise, you can specify any unused port in your system. Once again, press Ctrl O to save, Y to actually save, and then Ctrl X to exit. Back at the terminal, enter this command to start our new Docker container. This is a fairly sizable install, around 1 gig of space, so give it some time. If everything worked, your screen should look like this. Now we can access our new AI. To do so, open a web browser and in the URL bar, type in the IP address of the Raspberry Pi followed by the port number specified in the Docker Compose file. In our case, it looks like this. If you are connected directly to the IAB Wi-Fi of the Pi, remember your IP address should be 10.10.10.10. Once connected, you have to create a user profile. It's an administrative function. The first user profile automatically becomes the administrator, so don't lose that information. Our first order of business, now that we are logged in, is to download a large language model, or two or three. Without a model, we really can't do much. In another window, we can navigate to the Olama library URL, and here we can browse all the models that are available. There are a lot of models. Under the name of each model is a short description, and the little blue highlights under the description that look like 7B, 14B, etc. indicate model size. Pi hardware is pretty limited in what it can handle, so we need to be looking for models around 1B. With our 4 gigs of RAM, we should be able to run a 1B or smaller model, but if you want to play around with it, you can try some slightly larger models as well, especially if you have a Pi with 8 gigs of RAM. So once we find a model, like Quinn, select it. Here you can browse the different model sizes available, and when you select the one you want, just highlight the model and size, like so, and copy that text. Now go back to your Olama browser window, select the icon in the top right of the window, and select Settings, Admin Settings. Go down to the Models tab, and here is a spot to paste in the model details we copied from the library. Once that's copied, hit the download button on the right hand side of that field, and it will start downloading the model. This is a 4B model, but like I said previously, you should really start with the smaller models, like 0.5B or 1B. This 4B model probably won't run on my Pi so I'm going to download some other models once this one finishes. If you have the space, I would download a good assortment of models. At this size, they aren't going to be particularly accurate, but they can still be helpful and starting points for some other things we're going to get into next. Now I'm back at the main page after downloading some other smaller models. Here I can select a model and select a default prompt just to show you an example. It looks impressive, but there are some gaps in what it's generating. The coding models, especially at this size, can help in generating some basic code, and it can assist in learning, but it really helps if you have a base level of knowledge to sift through what the machine is generating. Here's another basic example. As you can see, the speed really isn't too bad considering the hardware we're using. And while I just used example prompts for this, I hope it helps you see some of the potential here. 
But this is just the beginning. This software is pretty amazing. If we go back to the Olama admin panel, under the Models tab is a Documents tab. If we select this, we can see a bunch of information for using RAG, or Retrieval Augmented Generation. This means we can add our own documents to the identified directory here, and then use them as information sources for our models to draw from. So we can ask targeted questions in regards to the content in our library, and we should get more accurate answers. So to start, there are a few ways we could do this, but an easy way to demo is to take our documents we want to add and place them on a USB drive formatted for FAT32 or XFAT. We plug this USB thumb drive into our Raspberry Pi and then connect to the Pi over PuTTY. In PuTTY, we can use the lsblk command to see the connected USB drives. Here we can see the one terabyte drive that has the operating system and internet in a box install, and my thumb drive is mounted at media USB 2. Now I'm going to use this command to change directories to my USB drive and the Olama directory, which has all my documents. The ls command lists the files in that directory, so I can see that I am in the right place. Here is a list of all my documents. Now, I can use the following command to copy all my documents from the USB drive to the directory identified in the Olama admin portal. You can use the same command, just replace your source directory and path with your actual directory and path. The destination should be the same. Once it's finished, we can use this command to make sure everything copied. Now we can exit and return to the Olama admin portal documents section. At the documents section, we can now select scan and Olama will start scanning the documents we put in the directory. This will take a while depending on the size and number of documents. So give it some time, and let the good data percolate. Once that's done, we can go back to our main page and start a new workspace. Select a model, and then in the prompt field, enter the hashtag sign. This will bring up all your documents available for RAG. Select a document, and enter your query. This querying takes longer than simply asking a model, as it now has additional data it needs to process to formulate an answer. While using RAG usually gives higher quality answers, right now we are still limited by the size of our language model. But I still ran some examples, so you can kind of see what I'm talking about. The Rappel example is definitely a little weird. You can tell it's more targeted knowledge, but it's still kind of all over the place. For the next example, I would definitely say this is a higher quality answer, and maybe even kind of helpful. I find one area large language models shine is being able to summarize information, and it often brings up things that may have been overlooked. Especially contrast the radioactive fallout question when asked to the same language model without RAG. This is really quite a startling difference. And I think this really drives home this technology's potential in an off-grid package. But we aren't done yet. We can even use Olama to refine models based on our own data sets. Here you can see a model I quote unquote created off of Tiny Llama, but I used my entire document library to refine its knowledge base. It still isn't super amazing, but for doing all of this on a Raspberry Pi 4 and a USB hard drive, I think it's pretty darn amazing. And you can do even more with a llama. You just have to dive in. Generating a custom model is very easy to do. From the home page, select Workspace in the upper left corner. Here you can see all your models, including the custom model I already made. To make another custom model, select Create Model. Here you can enter all the information you want to identify your model, describe it, custom prompts, etc. In the Knowledge section, you can add documents, or just add all the documents in your library, depending on what you want the new model to focus on. When you're done, 
hit save and create. That's it. Okay, so now that our AI is up and running, here is the optional part of making it look good with Internet in a Box. So to do this, we log into our Internet in a Box admin portal and select the Content Menus tab. Edit Content Menus and Content Item List. Here we need to identify the Internet Archive menu item from the right hand side and drag it over to the left hand side. Save the menu. Now we select Edit Menu Items on the left side of the screen, then select Menu Item. And we can see the Internet Archive menu item, and we select Edit. Here we can change the contents of the menu item to match our new Owama AI. And we can even change the icon. I downloaded the icon previously, so here I can select the new icon, and then finish changing the menu description. You can put as much or as little here as you desire. Finally select the update button, and we should be good to go. Now we can exit back out to our Internet in a Box homepage, and boom! We have a perfect little custom icon. And now we can log in, and we're back, ready to start working with our models from where we left off. And that's it. This is a really cool integration. I picked to replace the Internet Archive module as I really don't use it. But if you need it, just select a different port and you can then access the Olama web user interface via the IP address and port number. At this time, Internet in a Box kind of limits what is possible with the custom menu. But maybe in the future, it will be easier to create new menu entries. This is just the tip of the iceberg when it comes to leveraging AI as a force multiplier. This tech can really make a huge difference. If you have some more powerful hardware and extensive reference libraries, you can do all kinds of things. Thanks for watching. We hope you give this a shot and start leveraging this tech in your own off-grid setups. Let us know your thoughts, and please like and subscribe if you found it helpful. Until next time.